On the edge of the Sahara Desert is an ancient city that is at the heart of the human smuggling trade to Europe. It is surrounded by terrorist operating grounds and is the jumping off point for one of the most deadly migration routes in the world. It really only takes a few moments in the back of one of these trucks to begin to gain an appreciation of just how tough it is out here. Imagine what it would take to make this journey. Crammed into the back of a truck. The searing heat, the desert wind. And if your truck breaks down, you are abandoned, stranded in one of Earth's most hostile environments. He left us in the desert the first day. Two guys gave up the diet that day because of the hot sun. For hundreds of thousands, the desperate journey for a better life starts here in Agadez, a mythical world heritage city of winding streets with an iconic mosque that has always been at the crossroads of trade. It is also about to become home to 21st century warfare's most modern drone technology. Niger is a central location from which the United States can operate. This is the story of Agadez, the drones, the desperation, the desert. Là, on va aller voir les immigrants qui sont cassés dans un hangar parce qu'ils ne peuvent pas aller dans des ghettos à cause des patrouilles de police. Adam, a local journalist and native of Agadez, tells us that just about everyone here has made their living off trade and most recently, the migrant trade. And business was good. It was very good. Every Monday, massive convoys of trucks would barrel across the desert for days heading towards Libya. It used to happen out in the open. But that's all changed. The government caved to pressure from Europe and an EU pledge of hundreds of millions of dollars in aid. The crackdown started, driving the smuggling industry underground. We reach one of the hiding spots. Guns Salut. right inside. Let me call the other guys, right? Parle français, anglais, arabe. They do speak the French. Français. All the people that come in here with my own contact, they just want to travel right to Italy. Abalde houses migrants until their money for onward travel comes through to his bank account, where he takes a fee. They are waiting for travel to Libya, and then they hope Italy. One young man, he's 20 years old from Nigeria, tried. But the truck he was on broke down, and the driver never came back. Um, I was luckily, after two weeks, seeing a car coming, then I tried to wave them. I didn't achieve my aim. I didn't, I didn't achieve my, 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 my dream. Now he's too ashamed to return to his family in Nigeria, and too broke, he says, to turn back to Libya. The crackdown has meant smugglers are keeping off the main tracks and away from water points. No one knows exactly how many migrants have perished in the desert, but rescue missions are now becoming routine. The third day, that was when everybody was giving up one after the other, you one after dying. the other. Yes, people were dying around you. Yeah, one after the other, with just one jerry can of water. So the only thing, you know, we were just economizing ourselves. We used the cover of the water, we put little water, just test it on your tongue so that it will not get dried up. Best somehow survived for 24 days in the desert. Most of those who were with her, they did not. Out of a group of 27, only the three women are still alive. We met her at a transit center in Agadez, run by the IOM, the International Organization for Migration, as she's waiting to return to Nigeria. What do you what do you see in your dreams? Exactly what happened. I see dead people. What exactly what happened in the desert? And it terrifies me a lot. Yeah. But I just hope hope and pray that with time to run out from my memory. Best thought that she was going to Germany to be a hairdresser. But then she got to Agadez and called the contact who had promised her the job. And that was when she discovered the depth of the deceit. I was crying on phone. She never told me that I was going there to prostitute. So when you said, no, I do not want to go, yeah, I am yeah. not going to be a prostitute, yeah. she threatened you. Yeah, she threatened me. Yeah. 
The city is a tinderbox. It's packed with a mix of migrants willing to risk everything. Those who spent all they had and failed. And an unemployed population running out of patience. Et nous, la crainte, c'est qu'on a peur que ces gens qui n'ont pas de travail, donc qui soient vulnérables, quoi, donc qui peuvent être recrutés souvent par des, par des, par des terroristes, par des islamistes comme ça. Et là maintenant, avec la chute de l'Irak et, et la Syrie, donc c'est vraiment une crainte parce que ces gens-là, s'ils si quittent la Syrie ou en Irak, où est-ce qu'ils vont partir? It's not exactly the most stable place to invest $100 million, but at the behest of the Nigerian government, the U.S. is doing exactly that. This is the largest troop related project in Air Force history uh, and Red Horse history. This is Nigerian Air Base 201, under construction just outside of Agadez. Conditions out here are quite austere to say the least. There is the dust, the heat, and not to mention just the sheer remoteness of this location. But this will eventually become one of the central points when it comes to the war on terror. It is from here that the U.S. will launch its MQ-9 Reapers, a hunter-killer drone with advanced intelligence gathering capabilities. The Reapers and U.S. Africa Command, or AFRICOM, are currently based out of the capital, Niamey. And despite the price tag, the move to Agadez is in America's interests. This is a nexus area or, or kind of a focus area of uh, multiple threats to the United States, be it uh, Libya in the north, uh, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb uh, to the west, or Boko Haram to the south. Uh, Niger is a central location from which the United States can operate. And it is also the only country holding together, relatively speaking, of course, in what the military refers to as a ring of instability, which makes Niger's stability key to the success of the broader AFRICOM mission. But proposed foreign aid cuts by the Trump White House has thrown America's long-term humanitarian commitment into question. And history has taught the U.S. military it must strike a balance. If you have one that gets too strong, we found in other regions that, that can potentially lead trouble uh, later on down the road. But the military understands the need for the, uh, the, the equal growth. And the military understands that it needs to reach out to the local population to maintain their own security. One time in the morning is perfect. This is a dental hygiene workshop in Agadez. <laughs> On site, we meet a group of women leaders, and their top concern is the growing youth unemployment. People need to make a living, to be independent, to have a life of dignity, and to stop the lure of terrorist groups. C'est pourquoi on ne veut même pas donner le temps aux jeunes qu'ils soient recrutés par autre chose. Autant qu'ils soient occupés dans le chez eux. It is only in the desert that you begin to understand the innumerable challenges that come with physically securing this lawless land, and why the U.S. aerial presence is so valued by Niger's government. We're on a rescue mission with the Nigerian military escorting two IOM trucks, and it's hard not to imagine how terrifying this journey we are retracing must be for the migrants. Our convoy will stop when one truck is in trouble. Theirs, they just keep going. I guess this is how you fill up a car in the middle of the desert. And we still have a ways to go, another 60 kilometers. These tracks that we're following, this is still considered to be the main road, and the migrants 
the troops are telling us, are in a location that they're fairly certain of, but it is out into the desert, and it's obviously gotten dark out, which is going to make finding them that much harder, and when you're out here, anything is possible. Finally, some 10 hours after we leave Agadez, light signal. The migrants have been stranded here for three days after their truck broke down. They are given water and biscuits. They are about 30 in all, and around half of them are women. They don't want their identities revealed. They are wearing the local Islamic headdress because the smugglers told them to, so they can blend in. The women are Christian and mostly from Nigeria, and say they had no idea about the dangers of the road. And what did this Facebook page say? What were they promising you? I just, I just check how Europe countries. I went to, I went to the site, so I saw a lot of things. I saw job opportunities and I, I saw good life there, you know? They were sold a dream, but it is highly likely that Facebook page is a scam to get female migrants to Europe and then force them into prostitution. What's going through your heads right now? I'm just confused. I'm just confused. Feeling a bit frustrated right now because we don't have money again. Is that the hardest thing, like not wanting to go back home and disappointing your families? Yeah. Yeah. Getting back home, there's nothing to start with. So it's more, it's more than just disappointing. Right. As we speak, one of the women starts praying under her breath. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. We hear the agonizing wails of another woman and go to speak to her. I heard you crying. I'm not just in my baby. Two of her four children, it seems, were on another truck, and the convoy continued towards Libya. <laughs> I thank God that's my children. I put her to death there. You cannot see my children. I go. <laughs> It is only at daybreak that we truly understand the remoteness of where we are. The migrants ready themselves. They pile into the back of the trucks. They are reluctant to leave. They want to keep going to Libya and not back to Agadez. This is the crossroads of the war on terror, of hope and despair.